So a lot of you watch these videos from Russia that I post, and I think it's because it's like a train wreck. You just can't look away. Some of you say, I can't, you hate these videos, but I'm pretty sure you come back and watch them because it's like, it's like reality TV. You're just like, oh my God, these people are crazy. But a lot of you like my, my commentary. So I'm going to combine the two. And now I'm going to start this thing where I do commentary over the top of these Russian videos as much as possible. So this is Margarita Simonian. She's the head of Russian television and she's a big propagandist in Russia. She's a lot like Vladimir Solovoyev, who's a part of Russia One. She starts out this video with an anecdote where she discusses um, this professor talks about a, a geopolitical situation and how these Russian students should respond to it. And um, yeah, we'll just kind of go from there. Notice she says small African country. I mean, she says small African country because they don't do this shit to big countries. They they are bullies to littler countries. But the minute someone can push back, they they tuck tail and run. Weirdly, everyone that sat in classes has probably fled Russia at this point. Yeah, don't shame the Soviet Union, even if their Soviet Union is wrong. Like, see, exactly. Don't give a shit. They don't, they don't care about the rules-based order. This is an order that even the most powerful nation in the history of the world, which is the United States, follows. They don't give a shit. If it can lead to more influence, more power, more money, more pride, they will do it at the expense of others. And that's the bottom line. And she's flat out saying this. And that's their new policy. Is just don't give a shit about the world. We're going to do what we want. And it's, it's gross. It's absolutely gross that people support this. Yeah, nostalgic feelings for the USSR because it was such a great time for them. Yeah, getting in line for butter is something you want to go back to. Unbelievable. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. They want to be so much more powerful than everyone else that they're willing to hurt their own people. And then, and then try to spin it as nostalgia for the USSR. No, you really couldn't because you kind of turned your ass around when the when Cuban missile, missile crisis, crisis happened. They really don't. She's right. They have no way of responding. The United States is who they really want to attack when it comes to sanctions and counter sanctions. And they can't because the United States is so internalized. Something like only 7% of our economy relies on import exports with countries that uh, are cross oceans. A lot of our trade comes from Canada. The Canadian, US, and Mexico kind of alliance there, what used to be NAFTA. Um, is so strong and powerful that the U.S. does not need the rest of the world to conduct business as usual. Now we can we our lives may be a little less, um, I guess, bright. We may not get as much cool stuff and all this gee whiz tech. But the reality is, is we have enough energy to manage ourselves. We have enough food to manage ourselves. And this is between Canada and the U.S. And we we largely don't require the rest of the world to go on living. Russia does because all they produce is stuff you can pull out of the ground, natural gas, oil, various metals, etc., and food. And so they, but if they want computers and cars and tech and all this other stuff, they have to deal with the rest of the world. The United States doesn't. We have that. And it pisses Russia off that they can't hurt the U.S. nearly as much as the U.S. can hurt Russia and Russia's allies and influence Russia's allies to turn on Russia. And so they they want they do they want to just instead of writing sternly worded letters they want to actually do things and they just can't. Yeah, 
The problem is, is before this war started, they were like the 12th largest economy in the world. So they're just not going to have as much influence. And their their economy was smaller than the city of, or the state of New York. So the entire Russian economy was smaller than the state of New York. You just can't overcome that. And, and you see this nostalgia for the Soviet Union. I feel like it's early Gen Xers and boomers that want this. They want to recapture some form of culture where they're bigots and they don't like the fact that the more cosmopolitan and liberal Europe was bleeding into places like St. Petersburg and actually making good change for human rights, etc. And so Putin and his cronies and then all of the, his supporters said, we can't have this anymore. This is an affront to our ways and now they're nostalgic for the USSR where they put people in gulags. Jesus, not even the USSR going back to Alexander the Third. Like, I mean, how, how far back in history does Russia want to go? They're not going to, they're not looking forward. And they never have. They've always been a reactionary. What is the U.S. doing? What is the United Kingdom doing? Oh, they suck. We're better for X, Y, and Z. And this, this is a perfect example. They want to be scary. They want to be able to hurt people. They want to be able to have people be scared of them. The, that's, and that's, that's a problem. The U.S.'s power isn't derived from its military. Yes, we have a lot of power, but it's derived from the economy. Much of our influence across the globe is in soft power, something the Chinese have been trying to match the U.S. in. And the U.S. does that through aid, through integrating their economy, through stabilizing currencies by allowing them into the dollar-based system. And because of that, the U.S. has created a global system where countries rely on the U.S. and actively want to be a part of the U.S.'s economic, cultural, and military umbrella. And you know why? Because we don't fucking oppress countries that don't agree with us. We, and I'm going to get a lot of commenters that are going to what about various different things. But the reality is, is we don't go to other countries and say, if you want to play with the U.S., you have to become Americans. And that's what Russia is doing to Ukraine. You want to, if, if, if we want you to be Russian and the Ukrainians don't even want it. So... That's that's kind of the thought process that Russia is going through, and they can't match that. They want to use their hard power as if it's the British Empire or Rome or the Mongol Empire, and they don't. They can't do it because they have no soft power, whereas the U.S. uses the far more effective soft power to reach international goals that uplift the entirety of everyone that works in the U.S.-backed rules-based order. А это как-то больновато. Вот не хотелось бы нам всем, чтобы им страшно было это делать. Yeah, they just they just want to hurt people and make people scared, bend them to their will, like like the authoritarian, despotic dictatorship they really are. Бесконечно. Чуть не после каждого моего эфира пишет, рассказывает о том, что я, дескать, призываю к ядерной войне. Bullshit. I have videos showing where you are saying strike London, strike Paris, just like Vladimir Solovoyev. You both are two peas in a pod wanting nuclear war. But the reality is, is I don't think they really want nuclear war. I just think that's how they can try to unite their people. Here's the thing about the Russians. They need to unite their people against a common enemy at this point external to Russia so they don't unite against the Kremlin and these folks because what happens is is the internal strife the economic sanctions and the damage that is being done to the Russian people by the Kremlin needs to be for a reason other than it is just the Kremlin making bad choices the bad choices are the reality the Kremlin needs to say no this is because of the West so that they can internalize and try to solidify the base Problem is, is it's not working as well as it has in the past because things like the internet exist. But she is out there trying to peddle this nonsense to try and get the Russians scared of a common enemy and not angry at the Kremlin. No, we won't back down. Leave, leave Ukraine and we'll back down. I guarantee it. You, you, you run a front to our rules-based order, and if you don't want to play by our rules, then fuck you. You, you get the punishment. Anyway, she goes on this show and award she got with President Putin and whatnot, and that's the end of the video, but I'm running out of time. So let me know if you guys like this kind of format where I'm showing 
the the news from Russia or news and then kind of commenting on it. And I'd like to hear what you guys think. But yeah, again, another bunch of kooks in Russia.